It's always a thrill flying these machines, but I'll tell you what's not a thrill, packing all the equipment to do so. Big thanks to JLCPCB for sponsoring this video, especially when you need a computer for the telemetry data along with the associated cable, radio, and antenna, a monitor for the first person view along with its associated cables, adapters, and module, the battery bag, and not to mention the aircraft itself that is in pieces and must be assembled before flight. All of this only to arrive and realize you didn't even bring the transmitter. And let's face it, flying such a sophisticated machine with a typical RC transmitter, well, it just kind of makes it feel a little toyish. And it's not a good look if you're trying to convince your wife otherwise. This is painful. That's why I've spent the last couple of years developing this. The trunk, as so graciously named by my wife. Get your trunk out of here. Allow me to give you a little tour. We start by connecting all the peripherals such as the telemetry radio and the digital video receiver with Velcro on the backside. Plug in the transmitter module, power and HDMI for the video receiver and the telemetry radio into the PC's USB port. The other USB port is a 5 volt USB charging port to charge a wide range of devices including those nifty electronic cigarettes you puff on when you can't see your aircraft anymore. Do you see it babe? Do you? Once that's all set up, you can connect a LiPo battery or a standard PC power cable that powers the power supply that lives under the keyboard. You toggle the switch to select it as your power source and the voltage slash amp meter powers on behind it. Once you verify you have proper voltage, you turn the key to power it all on. Once it's got power, the first thing I like to do is... Backlighting. And that's where the sponsor of today's video comes in. With the help of JLC PCB, I was able to very quickly learn how to design and create custom PCBs for this project that made for a tidy background with minimal wires and a wicked backlighting system. The PCBs are daisy chained in parallel to share the power for the LEDs that illuminate the lettering on the panels. All I had to do was create a sketch on Fusion 360 that wouldn't interfere with any objects and project the holes where the 3mm LEDs would fit into. Then I jumped onto JLC PCB's AZ EDA software and drew up an electrical schematic. That then transfers over to the actual PCB design where you can import that DXF sketch from CAD and you have an outline of the PCB and markings of where each LED should be positioned. You grab all the components you placed on the schematic and place them along the board exactly where you need them to be. Once everything was in place, you can route all the connections to where they need to go, creating vias to route to the other side of the board as needed. Once everything is routed, you add the finishing touches like your logos or text, you view the 3D model in awe for two hours, then you hit that generate Gerber button or just order the PCBs right away. Since I had to drop nine of them, I just saved the files, went back to the home page, uploaded the zip baby food files, and I had an instant quote for production. Place that order and you'll have your custom PCBs at your doorstep in less than a week. The greatest challenge I've had to overcome? Um, I'd say maintaining a healthy marriage. Yeah, definitely. Just had to devote a lot of time and attention to this project, you know, that otherwise would have gone to my wife. She was always like, oh, me so. You know, so I'm just like, come on, chat GPT, figure it out. Power on the PC, transmitter, and external power for the video receiver we connected earlier. The display for the FPV unfortunately needs to be powered by an external battery for now, because I incorrectly manage the power and the primary control system freezes up if it's connected to the internal power. 
but I'm working on a fix for that. And finally, we pull out the joystick. My three-year-old daughter, too, you know, she was always around flipping switches, figuring stuff out and whatnot. All the input controls, such as the joystick, throttle, and rudder, talk to an Arduino that processes the inputs and converts it into a CPPM signal that it then sends to the external transmitter. In my case, a TBS crossfire. Oh no, hold on. Yeah, no! It also features a six position switch for changing flight modes, a guarded toggle switch for arming and disarming, spring loaded gear and flap levers, and all of these are on their own channels. The joystick on the throttle panel and the thumbstick on the joystick are routed to the same channels and both control the same payload. In my case, a camera. There's also a trim cat switch on the joystick that controls pitch and aileron trim. Those values are displayed up here on these mini OLED displays. These three switches control aircraft lighting, and these two switches with the two buttons, well, let's just say I really can't wait to use them. They're pretty self-explanatory. You can fire the payloads either with the buttons on the panel or the button on the joystick. And finally, on the top right, we have a magnetic information panel that lists the limitation for the aircraft you're flying and my beloved Patreon supporters. Supporter. Thanks, Harry. So with that, it's time to finally put it to the test. This is actually the first time I will be controlling an aircraft with it. My greatest fear about this whole thing? Um, I'd have to say people not liking and subscribing. Ah, it's not armed. Ah. Armed. Armed. If you watched my previous videos Here where I attempted to land the aircraft autonomously, it was actually for this very reason. I have programmed the autopilot to return and land back on the runway if it loses signal. And I did test this with my radio master at the beginning of the video when you were just getting settled in. This is a system that cannot fail. My emotional support animal won't do much goes. for me in that scenario. Yeah, I mean... Losing control of the aircraft and like crashing into some old lady's car, possibly ending up in jail. Sure, that's like a close second. Now, I know having a separate rudder lever is not ideal, but integrating a twisting joystick was just way beyond my cat expertise. If anybody has any better ideas for the rudder control that doesn't involve me getting my first set of gray hairs, please leave a comment down below. Or just say hi, that's cool too. I don't okay. have many friends. Right. That's fine. Would you please still be my friend? Whoa, 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 whoa. So taxiing the airplane was pretty hard, but I have a few hunches as to why it was so difficult. It is a tailwheel airplane and the winds were pretty strong. They were like gusting up to 20 knots. So I think the airplane was kind of weather veining into the wind. Um, and when I was taxiing downwind, the tail would flip around and that's what happened there. So I just went and put it there on the runway where it needs to be and just took off from there. That should do it. That should be good. Here we go. Farm it. We're flying. We're flying with the joystick. We're flying with the joystick. Let's bring the flaps up. We are flying with the joystick. You can't see it, but I have a huge smile on my face as the ice cold boogers run down my my lips. Oh, we don't even have the backlighting on. Gotta have that on. Oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. Let's go up. It's 
start down a bit. I don't usually fly in manual mode, but I feel pretty comfortable doing so with all this. It's our battery at 15 volts, beautiful. Going real fast, 40 knots over the ground. Let's go to manual. Oh. Do a bit of trimming. Nose up. Look at that, the trim works. Manual mode, look at me. Alright, should we do a low pass? Let's go back to stabilize for that. Okay, let's land. Let's go flaps take off. I can't feel my fingers. Ooh, way too fast. Let's go flaps full. Landing. off. Ooh, ooh. There you have it folks. Well that went incredibly well. I was so happy with how well it worked. I actually took it out the next day and flew around for four hours. It's just, it's, it's hard to describe, but flying with a hands-on throttle and stick, it's just unreal. I was also able to update the fonts on the Walksnow video receiver and now I got this really cool green text showing all the telemetry data. So if you're wondering how I built this thing, it all started a few years ago when I was browsing at my favorite discount tool store. I saw this sleek box. And I said to myself, this would make an awesome ground control station. And I just had to get it. And that's where the journey began. I sat on the box for a few days trying to hatch some good ideas on how to get started. Then I saw a gentleman on YouTube make an insanely cool A10 home simulator. His channel is called The Warthog Project highly recommend taking a look. I thought this method for creating panels would be perfect for a ground control station. So as usual, I got on CAD and spent the better part of about six months designing this thing. I removed all the foam from the box and 3D printed these pillars where all the panels attached to. All the pillars have threaded inserts that the panels bolt down to. This design allows for easy customization, giving you a wide range of options to choose from for your panels. I've already gone through 
three different iterations of the transmitter panel, including taking apart an old Tyrannus radio. So I'm glad I made it versatile. For the panels themselves, I exported the sketches from CAD and laser cut some three millimeter acrylic sheets. I spray painted them black with the finest paint Walmart has to offer and stuck them back in the laser to engrave the lettering. Most panels consist of three sheets of acrylic. The front that is painted and engraved, the middle that diffuses the backlight, and the last one that has the holes for the three millimeter LEDs. Then, it was just a matter of attaching all the components like switches and potentiometers, as well as some 3D printed components like the flap and gear levers. Finally, on the back side, we attach the custom PCBs that bring it to life. Oh, and wiring. A lot of wiring. So if you want to make your own trunk, the first thing you have to do is like and subscribe. Then head straight on over to my Patreon page where you'll find Harry and the excellent opportunity to keep my marriage alive as well as the downloadable 3D print files, the laser cut SVG files, and the Gerber files, and all the juicy details about how this contraption comes together. And if you think this is over your head, just remember, I have no idea what I'm doing. It's mostly my good friend, Chad Jippity. Say hi. Hi, everyone. Glad to be part of the show. Definitely leave a comment down below if you would be interested in purchasing a kit or even a fully assembled trunk. I'm sure they'll love it. Keep those comments coming, folks. I am, well, we are continuing to develop the trunk and hope to one day have Edge TX on here so that it's as universal as all the radios that are commercially available. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. If you like my style, you too can style up with official Lloyd Industries merch over at lloydindustries.store. There, you'll find a variety of nifty knickknacks like this coffee mug that will let people know you're not ready for conversations just yet. Thanks for watching, everyone, and happy holidays from everyone here at Lloyd Industries. We'll see you next year. Mia, no!